A little blurb about these Pachi's batteries. They've got double redundancy in the BMS with military spec chips. So if part of the chip fails, the other chip has got a redundant uh, portion added to it. Military spec uh, BMS, um, great addition to any system and multi-protocol. Um, I think these batteries are awesome, make for such an easy install. You cannot get it wrong. You keep orange to orange, black to black. Um, these snap-in cables make things so easy no need to get uh, lugs and cables and all those things and uh, we do provide these cables just need to ask for them in this video i want to show you guys how to connect up uh, these pytees batteries now i'm going to use one battery right now to make it simple one battery and one uh, this is the grow what 3000 es the us version um, the es lvm es 120 volt inverter and show you how to connect this thing up and uh, then we're going to connect two inverters up and more batteries up as well so we're going to try and be as comprehensive as possible um, step number one is we're going to just remove well these parties batteries are 100 amp hours they're 51 volts so they are 5.1 kilowatt hours each now if anything kills a lithium-ion battery is discharging it too hard and charging it too quickly so if you've got an electric vehicle, uh, to, to demonstrate this principle, if you had to go to a fast charging station, uh, at first your battery will start, if, you, if your battery is very low in your electric vehicle, the charging will start very, very slowly until the battery reaches middle point of the charge. And at the middle point of the charge, that's when it will charge the quickest. And as it gets to the top of the charge rate, the system will slow the charge rate down and top off the battery. So it's very important also we don't over discharge and overcharge these batteries. I'm glad that they've used common sense and limited the uh, charging and discharging current to 50 amps uh, to, to lengthen lifespan. Uh, it's very easy to kill a lithium battery by, by getting too few batteries. Okay, so step number one is, well, before we even start step number one, what comes with these batteries? are these two different connectors over here these are for this comes in a battery this is to link multiple batteries together it's click 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 it's pretty simple there's a push button on the side over there i'll show you on the red cable um, if you click them in you put them in like that then there's a little push button on the side that you use your thumb to put in and pull the pull the cable off okay and so it comes with a, with these little links it comes with one of these cables over here to link any new inverters future inverters to each other and it also comes with a little ground wire like that to be able to link all these batteries up together okay things that are not included in here are the battery cables so these are the long battery cables that come out um, and go to the inverter it's gonna have a set of red and black okay and this is how we do it so We've got this output of this inverter linked into this breaker. Nothing over there, just linked into this breaker. We always like using breakers, all right, to turn things off. Yes, there are breakers on these guys, but these are there to protect the battery. If you have 10 of these batteries all together, each supplying is 50 amps, there's nothing, there's nothing to protect the cable. And that's what this circuit breaker is there for, okay? So I've wired these into the bottom of the circuit breaker over here. This is 100 amp that I'm using. And I'm going to just simply push these cables in like that. Okay, I'm going to turn this switch off first of all. Plug that in. Now, by default, all of these switches are off. For Grow What, we're going to put dip switch number three on. And this is the in the appendix A, also on our website uh, under the battery default. So Grow What, we're going to hit the switch number three in the, in the up position. And there's all the wiring diagrams if you want to make your own cables up. But this thing does multi-protocols and also does SMA right now too. So because we're connecting to a grow watt inverter, switch number three is up. Now we could just simply throw our breaker, power this guy on if we don't want any communication at all. Power this guy on, hit the little switch button over there. It'll show us the state of charge. I've had this running all night long, so it's probably very, very low state of charge. Flip the breaker. You probably use your pre-charge resistor as well. Um, 
turn this guy inverter on and by default um, by default the battery type is set to AGM in this case okay and we turn the inverter on down at the bottom there and within a short amount of time it'll turn on and put out 120 volt AC for us and no fuss at all okay we can use there we go 120 volts AGM battery type is pretty safe um, it's not going to overcharge the battery but now uh, we have these uh, this BMS port over here so the only concern we have with this method with the AGM battery style is we're setting our charge amps to 60 amps now watch what happens to this when we plug the uh, the communication cable in it goes down to 20 amps and rightly so because it only wants to charge each 100 amp hour battery at 20 amps that is the safe charging method in other words if you've got a lithium battery pack the safe charging time is about uh, f uh, five hours four to five hours so 100 amp hour battery pack charging at 20 amps is going to be fully charged in five hours that's to prolong the lifespan if you're going to set this thing at 60 amps yes it's going to work but you're going to shorten the lifespan of your batteries so it's working perfectly just like that so here we've got our cable you notice on the one side the grow what cable that says hub on the one side and on the other side this is not a straight ethernet cable okay this cable there's got some in the appendix a it shows you there's some pairs that are swapped around that goes into the battery this goes into the battery because grow what uses can bus we're going to plug that into the can port over there okay you see our state of charge is three leds then this over here would normally go into a hub if we were going to connect more grow what inverters together we could use a can hub like that but in this case we don't need to in fact i'm going to show you how even not to use one of these uh, if possible and uh, so we're just going to go ahead that can hub away and plug this guy straight in to the grow what the port underneath where it says can right can bus if you can see that hopefully my camera can focus on that can bus in there and now we can program this inverter right now so we go to setting number five. Oh, by the way if you wanted to do a factory reset on these grow units you hold down the up and down buttons together and ask you for a password you put in the number 305 for any reason that your inverter won't invert just put in 305 it says enter reset push it again and it's reset okay and I can push escape and now when I push enter you'll notice that it used to be SOL now it's UTL now it's set to factory defaults okay so what we're going to do is go to setting number five and notice the charging amp 60 amps setting number five and it's AGM at the moment we're going to set that to lithium lithium over there enter and then it's going to ask us for the protocol next we're going to push enter and we're going to push put 51 for this particular battery 51 enter and then escape okay now if I push enter again you see the charging amps this battery is a 50 amp maximum charging so it's automatically changed the charging parameters it's also changed the um, let me get rid of the beep oh to get rid of the beep on these grow what inverters you hold down the enter and escape buttons together and that little beep will disappear I know it's pretty annoying and let's have a look at some of the settings now and I'm not going to show you how to program the inverter uh, that's another video but we just want to get the battery working right now okay and alarm you'll notice and it's automatically set the bulk flow bulk voltage the float voltage and the low DC cutoff let's see what that is set to 20% it's changed the voltage now to a percentage so if the battery gets below 20% it's going to start alarming okay now if this communication is not working if I pull this plug out over here okay we're going to see what happens in about 20 seconds time I'm not gonna well I can I can speed up the video 
but watch what happens in a short while. So the battery is just fine. See that fault code 20 means the communication to the BMS is lost and immediately it stops outputting 120 volts. Okay, so I'm going to plug this cable back in again into the CAN bus port over there and within 20 seconds or so that fault will disappear or even quicker in this time and then the unit will output 120 volts again because all is well okay very good that's with one inverter and one battery bearing in mind this is only a five kilowatt hour battery and that's a three kilowatt inverter so if you had a three kilowatt load full three kilowatt load this battery would only last an hour and a half okay but it's also limited to 50 amps output as well so 50 amps times 48 volts is two kilowatts so if you pull more than two kilowatts off a single battery the battery is going to trip on overload and uh, so that's the reason for that so now i'm going to add the second battery to this to one inverter it's as simple as well we're going to shut the we're going to shut the battery off first of all let's shut the inverter off to begin with turn the inverter off over there and then just to be safe i'm going to shut off the breaker as well and there you go we just remove these caps and these click click cables are amazing just like that and for the red red to red black to black okay now link zero port okay whatever when if uh, now we're connecting two batteries together what's going to happen is we're connecting link zero port up to link one port the battery with the link zero port open is always the master okay so what we're going to do is set and another important thing is only the the master inverter needs to be set to the the grow what protocol in this case so i'm going to put that switch off as if it came out the box i'm going to move this cable up to the can bus over there and i'm going to turn this on and give it a little reset over there okay you'll notice me connecting these two batteries together there's an alarm state so i must have done the uh the order incorrectly so i'm going to push that little reset button on the on one over there and the reset button over there and then we can do that one more time turn these on and there we go now we should be good okay just a little bit of um, on and off all together start with the bottom and then the top i'm going to hook up the second inverter i've just already plugged in the cables there male to male female to female or whatever male to female that was what i mean um so I'm going to have to run a separate set of these cables. It's always good to have a separate set of cables per inverter. You don't want all of that, all of those, all of that power running through one pair of um, cables, because I mean those inverters have the output now of capacity of six kilowatts. Six thousand watts divided by forty-eight volts is roughly one hundred and twenty amps. So uh, these two batteries won't be able to supply that because they're only fifty amps each. But uh, we don't want to. Uh, make these cables get warm with 120 amps okay so we've got our cables connected into the second breaker which feeds that inverter over there let's turn the batteries off just to be good citizens and plug these guys in okay so now we still got these two batteries linked together but we have a separate cable running to one inverter and a separate cable running to the other inverter. So now we're going to go ahead and turn them on. Let's turn the batteries on first. And let's turn the breakers on for the inverters. Turn them on. And hit these buttons over here to reset the communication.
Okay. So immediately what you can see is mayhem. Okay. Mayhem because we haven't configured anything. Okay. So these two inverters have not been configured for the output. So this one over here is set up a single. So I need to go to setting 23. That is set up a signal. I'm going to set this to 2P0. And the other one to 2P2. The other one's already set up to 2P2 beforehand. So you'll notice that this one is pretty fine. It's communicating with the battery just fine. This guy is bleating, all right, because there's no communication cable in there. Okay. So. All right, so that other battery is squealing because of no com communication. So all I'm going to take is my second cable, hub and battery. So hub goes to the inverter. I'm going to plug that into the CAN bus port over there. And simply plug in the second cable to the CAN bus port over there. And even though that is not set to grow our protocol, the master is set to grow our protocol. And there we go. The, the uh, alarm just disappeared. And the outputs now is starting to come on. So there we go. We did not need to have one of these hubs. Cool. These batteries are amazing. So the problem would be if you had three inverters and two batteries, well, that'd be a problem immediately because you don't have enough batteries for your inverter. And the capacity is too small for having a nine kilowatt inverter. So that would be ludicrous. So if you had three batteries, you could have three cables, one to each inverter, but that still wouldn't be, in my eyes, enough batteries. So I'm going to do a quick um, reconfigure and reconfigure all these batteries over here to operate with those two inverters. And it's as easy as it's going to take me 30 seconds. Turn these guys off. Okay. Then I'm going to turn these batteries off over here. And I'm going to connect these guys to the top. This is now going to be the master because we're going to run the link from the bottom to the top and link port zero is going to be open. So then pin number three must be on. Over there. All the others can be off. Off, off, off. And we're going to connect our link cables up and our quick little jumpers. And we're done. Make sure it has a little snap sound. No matter, these guys don't matter with, with the left goes to the right or the right goes to the left. It doesn't make any difference. Okay, so all the cables hooked up. We got, we got trying to balance our battery too. We got this set of cables going to the one inverter and the bottom set of cables going to the other. You've seen Will Prowse's videos where all the cables are running in from the bottom and this one's 100%, that one's 90%, 80%. So we don't want to have to, we want to have a balanced system. So now we're going to just turn these guys all on. And hit the switch at the bottom. And you'll notice that'll start them all up. And there you have it. Now we can start our inverters up. Okay, first beeping, squealing because they have no communication. In fact, the first the first inverter, I've still got it connected to the old the bottom over here oh and I have not connected my interconnecting cables either so let me do that and remember I'm not going to do that in this video but you can use a ground wire you can each ground wire to the chassis or to each other and have a single ground wire going to your inverter so that your batteries are all grounded and and I just went ahead and connected all those link cables into each other without um, turning these guys off but um, so after I've linked them all up again with the link ports, turn them all on. And then hit the bottom switch. 
and that'll light them all up. There you go. All communicating beautifully. Now we turn our inverters on. Okay, beeping first before the communication. And then the communication is all taken care of. So also this one, you'll see that this inverter too is set to lithium and 51 protocol as well. And let's have a look what the charging amps is gonna be set to. 80 amps. Okay, so it already knows that's the maximum amps it can charge with. So there we go with the GrowWatt inverters with the Pytees batteries. Very simple. Uh, I know some guys like to use lots of fat cables. So let's go, let's say you've got two pairs of these cables per inverter, no problem. So I could just take a second pair of cables, pull these links out, put the pair of cables in there, run them to the battery, and then from the battery, run a link to keep uh, the first half of the batteries in sync with the second half of the batteries. A quick note if you wanted to make your own CAN bus cable and didn't want to buy one from me, that's fine. So you're just going to use pins three and four on the, the CAN bus on the battery. Okay. And then for your grow watt, those pins three is going to go to pin four and pin four is going to go to pin five. And that's it, two wires.